Now at 6 a.m., we're tracking more rain in the bluegrass that could make for a messy morning commute. A man jumped out of a second story window to escape his burning apartment. We'll tell you why. And today, some Lexington parents could find out if their children will be moved to a different school. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Welcome in to you. Hope you're having a fabulous start to your Tuesday. I'm Rebecca Smith. Bill Bryant has the day off. And we are looking at a lot of rain out there this morning. We're hoping that we can see some dry spots this week, really, because that's how long we're going to be dealing with this, right, Micah? Yeah, it looks on and off all week long. It's not one day that you actually have rain all day long, but it's just on and off. One during the morning or during the afternoon. It just kind of depends on what day you're looking at. But today, it's mainly during the morning hours. Look outside. I mean, it's just a wet go at it this morning. Very nasty travel this morning as you're walking out the door. Don't forget, pack your umbrella and your raincoat and also your patience there on the roadways because people will slow down with this rain falling across the region, especially 64 BG Parkway and just south of that. That's where the heaviest rain is located at the moment. It's kind of hard to wake up when you have rain like that. 50s and 60s out at about, and we'll sit right there around 60 degrees. It doesn't really rise or fall, uh, nor fall as we approach the afternoon hours. That widespread rain is here now, but when does it move on out? I'll show you that coming up. Hopefully sooner rather than later. Thanks so much, Micah. Well, folks in flood prone areas across the state are monitoring the water levels this morning. Denny Smith manages the Estill County Golf Course and says part of the course has flooded twice this year. That course sits right next to the Kentucky River. About every spring, uh, we get a lot of rain and the water will come up. Well, Estill County Emergency Management says they will be taking a wait and see approach before they decide if any action is needed. Well, more rain, of course, on the way this week, and we can, of course, help you track the weather even when you happen to be away from your TV. On WKYT.com, you can take control of a first alert defender, a zoom right up into your neighborhood. You can also download the WKYT first alert defender radar app for your iPad or your smartphone. Well, a shooting outside a Lexington store led to a stray bullet hitting a passing car. It was a close call, and new this morning, police have made an arrest. WKMT's Mark Barber is live in Lexington to show us who is now facing charges. Good morning, Rebecca. Tyler Mack was arrested yesterday after police say they identified the 21 year old as the man who nearly shot two unintended targets. Police tell us that when Mack fired at a person outside a convenience store near Georgetown Street last month, the stray bullets hit a vehicle that was carrying two people. Officers tell us, fortunately, they were not hurt. By the time police got to the store, we're told the shooter was gone, leaving behind multiple shell casings. According to an arrest warrant, detectives weren't able to watch security video at first due to technical issues. However, when they fixed the problem, police say they saw Mac firing at a person who was holding a silver gun. Police say they learned the shooter was Mac when their police gang resource unit identified him. We've learned from court records that Mac just got out of jail two months ago. In February, he was arrested and charged with receiving stolen property and first degree drug possession. He posted bond the next day. According to court records, there is also a domestic violence case moving forward against him. The case was filed just four weeks ago. Now, the 21 year old is set to be arraigned in court later today. He's facing charges, several of them, including wanton endangerment, carrying a concealed deadly weapon, as well as criminal mischief. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Thanks so much, Mark. Well, six families are looking for a new place to live this morning after a large fire in Nicholasville. The fire damaged an apartment on Buford Place off South Main Street. This is eyewitness video we received. It shows thick black smoke coming up from that building. Witnesses said a man living in the apartment where the fire started had to actually jump from his second story window to escape those flames. When I heard glass break, and when I heard the glass break, I looked outside, I heard somebody say fire, and when I looked outside, I noticed there was flames coming from across the apartment. Well, the fire likely started on or near a stove. No one was hurt. They do think a cat died in one of the apartments. A Knox County daycare owner accused of abusing a child in her care says she's not guilty. Tracy Four was arraigned on a criminal abuse charge. She owns Rainbows and Lollipops daycare in Corbin. Her arrest warrant says Four placed a bean bag on top of a two year old while he was sleeping. And then police say Four then proceeded to sleep, uh, sit on that bean bag. The daycare is now closed. Four is being held on a $25,000 bond. 
Dozens of suspected drug dealers were rounded up in Pulaski County. The grand jury recently indicted 47 people on drugs charges. They arrested about 30 of them yesterday. All of the suspects either had drugs on them or had sold them to undercover officers. Police will now go after the drug suppliers and drug makers. Lexington police have an alert for moped owners. Lock up your ride or it could get stolen. Police say three mopeds have been stolen just in the last week. They have only been able to find one of them so far. We usually see more moped thefts in warmer months, and police say they tend to happen in the same areas. A lot of students or people around that college age are driving mopeds uh, to and from work, to and from class. And so areas, especially around the, the universities that we have here in town, are likely to see this sort of activity. Police suggest locking up your moped like you would a bike to keep thieves from stealing it. Lexington parents could soon find out where their kids will be going to school. A new plan for school zones is a year in the making, and today a committee will lay out its final recommendations. WKYT Sean Moody is live in Lexington with a preview of that meeting. Good morning, Rebecca. This is something parents across Lexington have been keeping a close eye on for about a year or so. Tonight, they could find out where their children will be going to school if the school board approves this plan. The school rezoning committee has been working on this plan for nearly a year. The school board will present this draft plan at a public meeting tonight from 6 to 8 at the district office here on East Main Street. This plan will affect students at elementary, middle, and high schools. The school board is encouraging parents to come out tonight to talk about any concerns they've got. They say they're not going to re visit any of their decisions, but they want the school board to hear the public's opinions because the decision will now rest with the board. If the school board approves the new zones, they'll go into effect in a couple of phases over the next few years. Elementary school zones would change for the 2016-2017 school year, while middle and high school zones would change for the 2017-2018 school year. Now those dates are dependent upon new schools being built in time for those school years. Live in Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. All right, thanks, Sean. Thousands of people gathered in Cincinnati to honor a teen whose medical battle helped raise awareness on pediatric cancer. Lauren Hill died last week from a rare form of brain cancer. Her fight inspired the entire country. Lauren played basketball for Mount St. Joseph University. Her memorial service was held last night at Xavier in the same arena where she scored her first collegiate basket just five months ago. As we shared the wonder and joy of that day, we came to realize the depth of Lauren's dreams, to give hope to the young children stricken with DIPG, to be a voice for the voiceless. Well, before her death, Lauren helped to raise more than a million dollars for cancer research, money still being donated to her nonprofit foundation. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris and First Alert Defender. On Defender, we're already at one inch of rain for many locations. You got to watch some high water issues here and there, especially those low lying areas where things just kind of feed down and you get that runoff from some of those hills in those mountainous regions. Got to be watching out for that. Flash flood warning in effect for Morgan County and also Elliott County until 10 a.m. And this is some tremendous amounts of rain. The rain gauge out toward Morgan County has picked up two and a half to three inches of rain just in the past 24 hours. It's tremendous amounts of rain. Here we go, a little bit more to add on to that. More head heads up. MSU is pretty soggy go uh, for those kiddos heading off to the school uh, off to school this morning. And that goes for everybody heading off to school. Going off to work, it's not going to be fun, especially if you're around the 64 corridor. And that'll take you through Owingsville and just south uh, along Highway 36 and also 60 through Lakeview Heights as there in Rowan County. And then work your way down toward Frenchburg and Menifee County. Across 460. It's pretty nasty this morning. This is when you see the yellows and the oranges, and it's not even any thunderstorms. That's some really good sleeping weather. I know a lot of us waking up this morning from this rain, but want to go right back to bed. Lexington still picking up on moderate to light showers. Really, it's situated just south into Nicholasville, uh, around the RJ Corman area, and work your way back towards, say, Harrisburg, down 127 toward Danville. The Danville Intermediate are really getting soggy this morning. Winchester, now it's situated just to the south of you guys. Richmond really getting hammered uh, with this moderate rain, too. Berea, make your way into the Waco area and the Big Hill area. Go down south into Eubank and Somerset. 
It's just a nasty, nasty start to the day in all regions. Dealing with the rain, seeing wet roadways. Frankfurt, you're not seeing as much rain, but you still have some wet roads from last night and early this morning. Still seeing some light rain outside. By the afternoon, we'll be right around 60 degrees. Not really rising nor falling that much. The showers will start to move out toward the afternoon, though. The bulk of the rain, like I've been showing you, right through here. Check out this particular model, and it's picking up on this very well. Goes from Richmond at two and a half to three inches of rain. Go off towards, say, Estill County and make your way into the Mountain Parkway over toward Morgan County, where we actually do have a flood warning in effect. I believe this wholeheartedly because it's really picking up on what's showing now on Defender, kind of that axis of the heaviest rain. So that's really the area to watch. Tomorrow we'll have that shower chance, mainly during the morning hours. Afternoon, it should work its way on out just like today. So I think Keeneland is your best bet tomorrow afternoon as opposed to, say, Thursday and Friday. Friday, you'll still have a smaller chance, but I mean, we have a decent chance of rain each and every day through the next seven days. High water issues will be there because the ground's so soaked and saturated. There's a lot to be watching out for as we travel through the next several days. Here's the thing that we don't really have to worry about besides flooding. Flooding is actual severe weather. We throw that into that category. But you're not looking at severe thunderstorms. You're not looking at tornadic activity. It's nothing like that. Most of this will be just shower activity through the next few days, but heavy showers too. Yikes. Yeah, and it just doesn't stop. Long lasting. All right. That's Thank right. you. Each morning we bring you weather and traffic together. Here's Officer Don now with a look at what is happening out on the roads. Good morning, Don. Hey, good morning. Of course, the roads are wet. It's going to take you a little bit longer to get in this morning. And a little trouble with the, the stoplight, the traffic lights at Richmond and Man War. Just had someone uh, phone that in, so we'll see what happens there. But for right now, other than that, there are no major traffic issues here in Lexington as we get a quick look outside to show you what's happening as you prepare to head out the, uh, out the door this morning for. Or work or school uh, and our wet commute there I-75 and 64 through the split on our ways map a few drivers on the way in toward downtown and reporting really no problems at the moment on Richmond Road Lee's Town Road through the construction zone looks okay and we're not really seeing any red on the inner and outer loops of the circle uh, anywhere from Versailles to Lee's Town we'll keep an eye on that throughout the morning and of course keep you up to date now back to you all right thanks so much Don more news from WKYT this morning is on the way presidential politics kicks into high gear today with Hillary Clinton making her first campaign stop since entering the race and we'll tell you how Coca-Cola is making it easier to share a coke with a friend